So, you could download the official 3CX desktop app, which is basically like Skype. It would be signed. As you can see, the digital signatures match the actual company. But the moment you run this, your computer would be infected with the malware payload, which includes things like an info stealer, a backdoor for the attackers, and potentially even the ability to completely control your computer remotely. And to make it worse, this is not some obscure software that nobody uses. This is your basic business phone book software that's used by many large companies, including Pepsi, NHS, Air France, PwC, pretty much everybody. The last company I worked for had this installed on all their computers. And the reason for that is you've seen Seen these before these used to be your typical business telephone line so if somebody wanted to call you they would call your telephone of course nobody wants to use a telephone these days so they use the 3cx app in order to ring up their colleagues at work that's how the entire business office operates these days so how did it happen well it all started just over a week ago when crowdstrike observed unexpected malicious activity coming from a legitimate binary I guess their analysts noticed strange connections being made to hacker infrastructure, deployment of malicious payloads, all coming from the 3CX desktop app, which was obviously supposed to be a legitimate software. And in some cases, they even noticed hands-on keyboard activity. This resulted in a lot of posts on the 3CX forums where people pointed out that their software was dropping malware payloads that were being detected by their antivirus software. And the response of their staff on the forums was pretty much to shift the blame and say that it must be somebody else who's hacked, because obviously there's no way they would be hacked, right? And then when people were annoyed, they just ended up being banned. Of course, since then, uh, their CEO has come out with an official soundbite saying how they care about transparency, they take cybersecurity very seriously, blah, blah, but we all know that's BS. Because their initial response was to avoid responsibility, they had no clue what was happening, and the responses from their team were less than helpful. And this really shows how unprepared a lot of large companies are for the event of a malware attack. And I know a lot of people feel that malware is no longer a problem, because we don't go to these third-party sites anymore. We're not sharing binaries among ourselves. First of all, well, you're giving up all of the user freedom then. But even if we were to trust these large companies with our cybersecurity and say, we're only going to use the official apps and that way there's going to be no problem, right? Well, this incident shows that that idea is patently absurd because now, because of one company being hacked, hundreds or maybe even thousands of businesses have got threat actor infrastructure now implanted in all of their devices potentially. This is a terrible situation, but let's do a quick rundown of how this application works. Now, if we take a look at the MSI installer from Virus Total, right now it's detected by 39 out of 59 engines. But if we see this in the graph, you can see that at the center of it all, we have this one MSI installer. But when I double click it, everything blows up. There's like a gazillion things going on over here. But let's see what's happening at a very basic file level. So once you run this application, which you just saw me do, it's going to unpack a lot of bundled files. And if we zoom into this, you can see what these files are. We've got the 3CX desktop app.exe. This is the primary executable that's running on our system right now. We've also got a malicious DLL, and this is really the core malware, ffmpeg.dll. Now, if you don't know what a DLL is, it's a dynamic library. So the way Windows works, even though every application is called an executable, there are libraries of functions predefined. They're often called by the EXEs. And the reason it's called a DLL is it's a dynamic linked library, which means this executable can load this library without the user knowing these libraries can be swapped into memory. So what is this FFmpeg library actually? Well, this is also a well-known software. It's an open library that provides a cross-platform solution to record, convert, and stream audio and video. So software like Skype, that is 3CX, uses this in their backend. So it's no surprise that this particular DLL was imported. However, this is not the regular FFmpeg DLL. It has been slightly modified with a shellcode 
that will be decrypted using this key after creating this event. And then there are more shell codes located in another popular DLL, D3D compiler. Now it's important to note that I'm not saying that these original files are compromised. It's just that 3CX got hacked and the hackers implanted some malicious code within the DLLs that they were using. There's eventually an HTTP request that's going to be made to the attackers. Now, once that happens, it can then download a malicious payload. A lot of this is going to be encrypted using AES, so you wouldn't necessarily be able to scan or see the payload until it hits your system. And then on top of that, the references to the malicious payloads, the injected instructions are all base64 encoded. This is a very sophisticated attack, and there are like four layers between the changes made to the original application and the actual malware payloads. So if you looked at the original application as an analyst, you probably wouldn't see anything strange. I mean, maybe a very small instruction that wouldn't make a lot of sense. But when all of this is stringed together, it leads to the hackers being able to compromise the computer. Now, just to show you as a quick example of how difficult this would be for an analyst to understand, I'm going to encode a text message in base64. So for example, if I say, I am malware, imagine there's code that said this. Now, once it's base64 encoded, that's going to look like this. And keep in mind, it's not like the actual malware URL that's being encoded. They're encrypted payloads, their instructions, and then the instructions themselves are encoded as well. So there's a lot of effort that has gone into obfuscating this payload, making it difficult for people to figure out what is happening. Some say this could be the work of a nation state actor, potentially from North Korea. But the bottom line is, regardless of who these hackers are, they have likely breached almost every business using this phone book system. Now, I've also noticed an uptick in malware preferring to be embedded in MSI files as opposed to EXE. Could be some technical reasons related to threat detection, or it could just be that EXE files are too old school now. But I know a lot of people will use their antivirus products configured only to scan EXE files. And that's a huge no-go in 2023 because there are so many different forms in which malware is being delivered. Could be an MSI file, could be a DLL, could be a JavaScript code, could be a Python script, a batch file, anything. So looking at EXE selectively is definitely not enough. And this also shows the importance of using a good antivirus software, because just because you're installing things from the original source doesn't mean that they can't be compromised. And if they are, an antivirus is still likely the most effective way, pre-breach or post-breach, of detecting and removing such threats. Now, in an ideal world, I would like to say that you could have prevented all of this just by having an antivirus installed, but that's likely not the case because if we go back and look at the detection history, as you can see, there was a long period of time where no antivirus was detecting this. And slowly, the uh, detections creep up. So a few days later, we have about 10 engines detecting it, and then it slowly starts to rise. Funnily enough, it goes back and forth for a while. Don't know what that's about. Maybe people thought it was a false positive because it's such a popular app. But the point is, it's still better late than never. Even if the threat was detected 10 days later, it's much better than not knowing about it a month later until you read it on the news and then decide to manually do something about it. Now, if we take a look at the detections early on, I'm really happy to see F-Secure as one that did pick this up as they are the sponsor for this video. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share it if you did. Feel free to reach out at tpsc.tech if you'd like to conduct a cybersecurity test of your business. And now to our sponsor. F-Secure have sponsored this video to tell you about the newest versions of their home security products. As you all know, we have tested F-Secure before and they have really solid detection rates and they have a really automated behavior blocker called DeepGuard that I really like. What's really cool about this version though is that everything is integrated into one UI. If you remember when we did the last review, one of my complaints was that if you go into one of these modules, 
it would have to open up a different application. Well, that's fixed now. You have ID monitoring built right into the main UI. Same thing with the VPN. So everything is pretty much in one place. It looks great. As you can see, it's got a dark theme and it's got all the security features you need in one simple UI. So if you're looking for an all-in-one solution with a really solid antivirus, a password manager, dark web monitoring, I highly recommend checking them out using the link in the description. I've always found F-Secure to be one of the best products for inexperienced users because it's entirely automated. It's got solid protection. Now I know some of you care about the country that the antivirus product is based in. F-Secure is from Finland. So no red flags there whatsoever. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.